Hi everybody and welcome to this new YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how to perform uh, the Hilbert transform in GNU Octave and um, especially how to perform the Hilbert transform using the FFT command in Octave. So let's directly um, head over to our Octave workspace and start by typing in our three well-known lines clear all clearing the command window uh, clearing the the workspace variables close all closing maybe open windows and clc clearing the command window so uh, hilbert transform what is a hilbert transform a hilbert transform is a very powerful tool in um, digital signal processing to transform a uh, real valued signal into an analytical signal or a complex signal. So in the previous videos I already showed you that a real valued signal has a symmetrical spectrum and um, then if we replaced for example the sine or cosine wave with an exponential function we only had a single sided spectrum. And uh, the, the Hilbert transform is a tool that allows us to transform a real valued signal to an analytical or complex valued signal. And um, an analytical signal is a signal which has a non-symmetrical spectrum because it's complex valued. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So I would say we create, for example, a real valued cosine or sine wave and then we have a look at the spectrum then we would expect because it's real valued that we have two peaks a symmetrical spectrum in in the frequency domain and then we would apply the hilbert transform to the signal using the fft command and have again a look at the spectrum then we see only a single-sided spectrum only one peak will be available and then we compare our fft based solution against uh, the built-in solution that uh, GNU Octave offers in the signal processing package. There is the Hilbert command available which is doing exactly what I um, told you. And so yeah let's start. So again because we are in the digital domain we have to create a sampling frequency. I choose this time 8 uh, kilohertz um, uh, kilohertz not megahertz 8 kilohertz and we we need the frequency of our continuous wave of our sine or cosine function let's say 500 hertz and to plot the signal and to generate the signal we need a time vector our t -WEC. the time vector starts at zero and is incremented by the the inverse of the sampling frequency, so 1 divided by fs, until our stop time, so our overall signal duration, let's say 100 milliseconds, 0 0.1 seconds, and again I'm subtracting here, subtracting here one sample, because we start at 0, we go up to n minus 1, if we would start at 1, I would go to n. So this is only uh, a convention. And then we create our signal, our real, real valued signal. Let's create a cosine. The cosine is two times pi, times our frequency, f, 500 hertz, times our t vector. So, and now we, we have a look at the signal. So we create a figure, a plot window, and we plot our time vector t -WEC, against our signal x our amplitude values we label the axis so the x-axis is the time axis in seconds and the y-axis are the amplitude values of our signal for example in volts and we turn on the grid because the plot looks nicer then and we can also pass a title to the plot. Real 
valued signal in time domain. That's what it is. So let's fire it up to see if we made any errors. Ah, that looks good. I have to switch over to the plot window that you can see the result. So, so here you can see the result, but at first I have to turn um, off our banner. So, so here you can see our plot window, real valued signal and time domain. We have here a cosine function from zero to 100 milliseconds with a frequency of 500 Hertz. We can verify that it's a cosine function by zooming into the value of zero. The cosine of zero should be one. Yeah, and here it is. Okay, so verified. Then we have a look at the, the spectrum of this real valued signal. We did it in the previous videos already, but we should do it now to understand uh, what we are doing with the Hilbert transform. So for the conversion from time domain to frequency domain, we use the discrete Fourier transform. The efficient implementation of the discrete Fourier transform is the fast Fourier transform FFT. They do exactly the same. Um, it's only uh, the FFT is a very uh, um, efficient implementation of the DFT. So. To calculate our frequency domain signal, we have to define the length of the frequency do domain signal. This is, I name the variable nFFT, so the, the length of the FFT output, and I pass to the nFFT length the length of the signal itself. So we take the whole signal and then calculate the FFT on the whole signal. For the time domain, we um, created a time domain vector to plot our time domain signal. So we do in the frequency domain by creating a frequency vector called FREC. And if we are calculating a spectrum, then it's nice to, to plot it in a way that we have on the left side the negative frequencies and on the right side the positive frequencies. And in the middle, we have our DC component. And therefore our frequencies go, uh, frequency vector starts at minus half of the sampling rate and goes up to half of the sampling uh, rate. Because we have a Nyquist theorem, so we, we, we um, uh, only go to half of the sampling rate. So we, we are going from minus nFFT half to nFFT half minus one times Fs divided by nFFT. So th this command here is generating a vector that starts at minus half of the sampling frequency. In this case, it um, starts at minus 4000 and goes up to plus 4000. This is our frequency vector. And so then we can calculate the FFT and the FFT. To calculate the FFT, it's quite easy. There's the FFT command. And we pass to the FFT command our time domain signal, X and the length of the FFT that we want to produce, nFFT, which is the length of the signal itself. We don't need this parameter in that case, but it's um, a good way to pass it to the function. And then we can plot the result. So we create again a plot figure and we plot here our frequency domain vector against our FFT. So I stop here and um, insert a small um, explanation. First, uh, it's, it's a nice um, vis visualization to plot the frequency components in decibel because there's a high dynamic range uh, uh, in the FFT output. We have values that are very high, we have values uh, that are very low. And to make this more um, uh, nicer to look, uh, it's good to plot it in decibels to, to be able to plot the dynamic range from the highest to the lowest value in a uh, uh, nice way. So um, we, to plot it in decibel, we um, take 20 times the logarithm of 10, base 10, and pass here our 
calculated spectrum, the FFT the FFT output, but with absolute values because we uh, we're using the logarithm command. And there's one special um, issue with the FFT command. I already mentioned it in the previous video. The FFT for plotting the FFT, we would like to have the frequencies on the negative frequencies on the left side and the positive frequencies on the right side and the DC component in between. But the output of the FFT is um, arranging the, the frequency components in a way that we have the positive frequencies, then the DC, uh, the DC component, and we have the DC component, positive frequencies, and then the negative frequencies. So we have to rearrange the FFT output to fit our negative frequencies, DC component, positive frequencies. This can be done by the FFT shift command, which is doing exactly that, just rearranging the vector. And then we label our axis again, the X label is the frequency in Hertz and the Y label is again the, the amplitude but this time in dB. So and if you are wondering why I'm using 20 times the logarithm of 10 because if we have um, amplitude values and not powers we take 20 times the logarithm otherwise we would use 10 times the logarithm and then we again turn on the grid because the plot looks nicer and we give a title to the figure um, real valued spectrum yeah spectrum that looks nice so i will fire it up so but before we have a look at it Let's think about what we would expect as as um, as a result. So, with a real valued signal, a cosine function, um, a real valued signal has a symmetrical spectrum. So we have the where we have the positive frequency components. We also have the negative frequency components. We here we have a cosine function with a frequency of 500 hertz. This means positive frequency 500 hertz. We would expect the peak. Because it's a real valued signal, we would also expect the peak at minus 500. And so we will have a look at our output. So here it is. And we see what we expected. So here's our FFT output. We have on, on the x axis our frequency axis as intended from minus half of the sampling rate, so minus four, four kilohertz up to four kilohertz on microspan. On the y-axis, we have our amplitude in decibels. And we have two peaks here because it's a real valued signal, um, symmetrical spectrum. And the peak is at nearly, yeah, it's at 500, 500 hertz as expected. Sometimes you will not be able to exactly hit the frequency that you designed. This is because of the so-called spectral leakage, leakage effect. I will talk about this special um, um, issue um, in another video. But yeah, here we, we have what we expected. Uh, Two-sided spectrum, symmetrical, because we have a real valued signal, a cosine function. So. What we now want to do is to apply the Hilbert transform to this signal and produce a single-sided spectrum because the Hilbert transform is producing a complex signal and the complex signal um, has a non-symmetrical spectrum. And um, so we would expect after applying the Hilbert transform to the, to the cosine function, um, we would expect uh, a signal that only has one peak on the right side. Let's try it. So we are going back to our workspace. Okay. So the Hilbert transform can be 
calculated in time domain as well as in frequency domain and I'm showing you here the way to calculate it in frequency domain using the FFT command then it's quite easy um, let's define a variable called XH it's the Hilbert transformed spectrum and I'm storing our original FFT output X to XH and to perform the Hilbert transform it's quite easy the only thing you have to do is to set the negative frequencies to zero, leave the DC component untouched, and because we um, uh, remove the negative frequency components, we multiply the positive frequency components by a factor of two to increase the amplitude that the overall power of the signal is the same. And so, we can do this by setting the negative frequency components to zero. Negative frequency components in our vector XH, don't forget, XH is the FFT, is the FFT output, so we have positive, uh, DC and positive frequencies, and then negative frequencies. So our negative frequencies start at N FFT half plus one until the end of the vector, and we set these values to zero. Then we said we leave our um, DC component untouched, but we multiply our positive frequency components by a factor of two and our positive frequency components start at the second sample of the FFT output because the first sample is the DC component. So we go from two until the end of the positive frequency components, which is NFFT half. And we set them to we multiply them by a factor of two so we are amplifying these frequency components so xh times nfft half so again this line here is setting the negative frequency components to zero we need it for the um, uh, hilbert transform you could also set the positive frequencies of components to zero but um, then the peak because we have a two-sided spectrum and the real signal and we only want to have a one-sided signal in that case on the right side so we set the negative frequencies to zero if you want to have the peak on the left side you would uh, set the positive frequencies to zero with this line we we amplify our positive frequency components by a factor of two that the overall power of the signal still remains the same so we now that's it, that's the whole Himbert transform. Then we have again a look at the signal spectrum. So we plot um, our, I take this, um, that uh, the, the code snippet from the above plot. In that time we have the Hilbert transform spectrum, Hilbert transform spectrum. And we plot again our F vector, again 20 times logarithm of 10 absolute value but this time not FFT shift uh, sorry again FFT shift but not of X of F XH which is the Hilbert transform signal so we're firing it up and have a look at the output uh, I will switch over and here it is yes exactly what we expected we now only have a single sided spectrum a complex signal because the Hilbert transform is turning our real valued signal in a complex valued signal if you are wondering what's going on here why we don't see here anything it's because um, there we have uh, um, we have set it to zero and zero in decibel means minus infinity so um, these are infinity values you could avoid this by adding a small random number instead of setting it to zero so you would still see this here in the plot, but it doesn't affect our result at all. So, now we have, this is the Hilbert transform. Setting one half of the FFT output to zero and multiply the other half by a factor of two. Now, we want to verify our solution. To verify, we can use the built-in um, command from the signal processing package from Octave uh, that offers uh, the Hilbert transform function. This function is returning us the time domain signal of the Hilbert transform. So to verify our solution, we have to um, transform our 
Hilbert transformed signal, which is the frequency domain, XH, back to time domain. And that's quite easy. Transforming from one in the other domain is just FFT. So we are in the frequency domain, we are doing an inverse discrete Fourier transform by using inverse fast Fourier transform, um, efficient implementation of the discrete Fourier transform, passing our XH vector to it. Again, it should be the same length as the FFT. So NFFT will be passed to, to the command. And the result is our time domain signal, XH. I was firing it up and then we can have a look at our... Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to show you what I did. So, you missed nothing. Again, we are transforming our signal from the frequency domain back to time domain. So, XH will be transformed to time domain, XH. Uh, with small letters using the IFFT command and the IFFT length is NFFT again and so I'm firing it up now let's have a look if our signal XH is complex because it should be complex and yes we see here in the sampler values we have an imaginary part it's a complex signal but is it a, the right complex signal by doing this we can have a quick look. Um, let's plot the real part of our Hilbert transform signal. So plot T weg against real by grab. If you um, there's the real command that is grabbing only the real part out of a complex signal. So we are passing to the real command xh. Again x label uh, time in seconds y label amplitude in decibels ah by the way we could use here the subplot function because we now want to plot the real value of part of the signal and also the imaginary part but doing it in two different plot windows is not that nice so there is a combined plot window which is called subplot and it's only it's the subplot command and what I what I what do we want to do we want to plot two two um, plot windows in one uh, the upper and the lower plot window for real part and imaginary part so we need two rows that's why we pass here a two and one column it's one plot one plot here one plot here so we have two rows but only one column and um, this third number is indicating uh, the, the the plot position so one means is the first plot two means uh, the upper plot two means the lower plot and so with again th the rest stays un uh, uh, unchanged so we pass a title we let's say um, real part of analytical of um, of complex signal and we turn on the, the grid, grid on. And then we, we're doing the same for the imaginary part. Again, subplot command, two rows because we have two plot windows, one column, and that's the second plot, so number two. We plot again TWEC against our imaginary part from XH. So it's the emac command, imaginary command, and we pass our complex signal to it. And again, we name the labels X label and Y label and the title, but I'm copying it because I'm quite lazy. So and then we have here the imaginary part of complex of the complex signal. Of the complex signal. So and we're firing it up, and let's see if we made any errors. Ah, and the signal is showing up, and it looks good. I will switch over to the figure itself. So, here. What can we see? Um, the real part of our complex signal is the real signal itself. Sounds a bit strange, but um, let me explain it in another way. What a... Hilbert transform 
is doing, converting a real value signal to a complex value signal. And the complex version of a cosine, you, you could um, uh, separate the cosine function or describe the cos cosine function by, by the Euler identity with exponentials. And there we have as real part, the cosine, which yes, here we have. And the imaginary part now should be a sine wave. So cosine, we can indicate it by, yeah, it's starting at zero, uh, at one. The, the sine should start at zero. Let's see if the imaginary part is a sine wave that starts at zero. Here it is, we start at zero. Perfect. That's also a property of the Hilbert transform. If you pass a, a, a CW signal to, to, um, to the Hilbert um, transform, like a cosine or a sine function, then the output will be um, the analytical signal. If you use the um, uh, octave command for it. And the analytical signal is a complex valued signal where the imaginary part is a 90 degree phase shifted version of the real part. So we have a cosine function, which is the real part of the analytical signal. The 90 degree shifted version of the cosine function it's the sine function, the sine wave, which is the imaginary part of our complex or analytical signal. And this is exactly what we can see here. By the way, I see that we missed the grid to turn on in the second plot window. Well, let me change it. Uh, where is it? Uh, so here. Now we have our nice grid and yeah so again analytical signal can be created by applying the hilbert transform function from gnu octave or using our fft based method the output will be a signal with a real and the imaginary part for a real valued signal or cw signal continuous wave like cosine or sine function the analytical signal real part will be the signal itself and the imaginary part will be the 90 degrees um, shifted version of the signal and this is what we have here real part is the cosine signal so our original signal and the imaginary part is a sine um, wave the 90 degrees um, shifted version of the real part so that's right in theory we are right but now let's compare our solution xh against the built-in uh, built octave, uh, sorry, <laughs> I was mixing MATLAB and octave because uh, um, I'm also using MATLAB, but here we're talking about octave, they are similar. And um, okay, so to, to use the Hilbert transform function in octave, you have to install and load the signal package. You load a package by typing package load and the name of the package. Here we are loading the signal package. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, so, yeah. By typing package load signal. So now we have loaded the, the signal package and there is the Hilbert transform function in it and it's called Hilbert. And to the Hilbert function, we pass our original signal x because if we go up here, this was our original signal, our cosine function, and we have calculated with this code here, FFT based, our Hilbert transform. And all that stuff will be done by this function here. So we only have to pass x, so the, the, the real valued signal to it. And the output lets uh, xh octave. So now we have a variable xh, Hilbert, so the Hilbert, the, anal, the complex signal uh, calculated by the octave function and the, the complex signal calculated by our FFT based map. Let's fire everything up to, to, to see if we made no errors. Okay, so how to compare? both results because we have complex signals with imaginary parts with um, uh, real value uh, with um, real part we have a real value part and we have an imaginary part so to um, 
compare both results, we just take the error. So, so we calculate the error or the norm between. Let's calculate the norm between both results. And it's the norm command. We pass here our um, self-made Hilbert transform signal and subtracting our octave generated XH signal. And um, let's see what is the output. And we seem that we, we I have to, ah, uh, maybe you're not able to see it because it's quite uh, tiny, but we have an error of 4.39 to uh, E minus 15. So uh, it's zero. So there is no error between our function and the built-in octave Hilbert transform function. So yes, that's it. I will post the code online and uh, uh, give you the link uh, to the code in the video description below. Um, so if you like that type of content, uh, give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe this channel. So see us the next time and yeah, bye bye.